Dark matter is a hypothetical substance that makes up approximately 85% of the matter in our current universe. But for some reason, we cannot confirm its existence since it does not interact with the electromagnetic force. This in turn means it does not absorb, reflect, or emit light, making it extremely hard to spot or even prove its existence. And the only reason us as a species believe in its existence is the unexplained nature of the forces of gravity. So, in this hypothetical of what if Naruto had dark matter or dark matter release, we will be stepping into something closer to a gravitational pull with some fictional spins on the concept of dark matter, which would more closely link it to antimatter. So, if you do see some crosses in that little gray section between the two, that is the reason just to spice the what if up a little bit more. But I've been blabbering on long enough with the explanation, so let's get into this. Nezuko, believe it! Whoever insults my hair will get the full brunt of my fury. Shut up, you idiot! Hey, it's me, Goku! We start off our scenario by giving some sort of an explanation or reasoning of how our main character Naruto comes to possess a non-ordinary form of nature release that wouldn't normally exist within the universe of Naruto, obviously being what our what if is about, dark matter. So in this exact explanation, we will be in a gray area between what fiction considers dark and antimatter and the scientific reason for what dark matter actually is. And to do this, we will start off with the waterfall of the end, or the valley of the end. So, here we do see Naruto and Sasuke in their final clash, Rosengan to Chidori. But this is where something interesting starts happening. Naruto's aura and Sasuke's aura would clash and envelop each other, creating some sort of a yin-yang until Naruto's aura becomes overwhelming. Both Naruto and Sasuke become much heavier until the aura dissipates, which would then leave behind a massive explosion. Obviously, the initial aura being a low form of gravity enhancement, thus the scientific version of dark matter, and the explosion being destruction being a part of that little gray area. Our explanation to keep it dark matter and not actually go into antimatter is that some of the effects do come from Kurama or the nine-tailed fox. So in this scenario, dark matter release is actually created by Kurama trying to take over Naruto, corrupt him, and somewhat poison him with his own chakra. This leaves a midway to where we could say that dark matter release that for most for the most part we consider to be purple or a purple color for the form of chakra being purple would actually be the hues of naruto's chakra and kurama's chakra coming together to form a purplish color and on the other hand another reason for why the chakra might be purple initially it started to be some sort of a poison since kurama wanted to take over naruto's mind by weakening his body and possibly his resolve. And to explain the explosion, we could say the previously believed tailed beast specific Biju Dama can somewhat go into a human chakra and form with similar attacks. We could obviously say this is due to the nature of the Rasengan being structured on the Biju Dama to begin with and so on and so forth. Since we do see a Biju Dama version of a Rasen Shuriken in the war arc of Naruto Shippuden. So that is our outstanding explanation. Anything connected to the original concept of destruction, which is in that gray area between dark matter and antimatter, once again, would actually be due to the destructive nature of Kurama. And our actual dark matter presence would actually be a form of a chakra field that makes an opponent who cannot stand such strong chakra bow down before them, in a sense. And at this point in the story, there would only be one or two characters that would be able to resist this urge being probably Pain and Obito. 
but eventually they would buckle beneath this as well, since in this era of Naruto, there aren't many people who can match the nine tails in chakra potency, reserve, and even mental state. So I do feel this would be more than effective. So this goes without saying that a lot of the abilities are actually just Naruto forcing his chakra downwards, meaning there won't be a lot of hand signs involved with this false Keke Genkai that we created. But we do need to still explain somewhat of how the story would go after this and how character interaction would unfold. So the first interaction I would see is Kakashi finding Naruto. When he finds Naruto, Naruto is still somewhat in a first tail cloak, basically between the one tail and zero tailed cloak, kind of flickering in and out of existence, but for some reason it is lingering. Kakashi would, as usual, rush Naruto back to the leaf as quickly as possible, so possibly Tsunade and maybe even Jiraiya could take a look, since this could be both because of Naruto's health and because of his seal. So, here is the big problem I see going on. I see Tsunade being able to heal Naruto, but because of the poison nature of the chakra that Kurama was letting flow into him, he would not be able to wake up until his seal is fixed as well. And it is pretty unclear how far Jiraiya was from the village or if he was present in the village. So in this scenario, I would say it would at least take a few days to the point from where Naruto got back to the village via Kakashi to the point where he would have originally left on the time skip. This is when Jiraiya would arrive to a pretty sickly Naruto with his seal almost completely shattered because of this situation. At all time, he is flooding a lot of of heavy nine tails chakra which creates a presence where not a lot of people could breathe so naruto was moved out of the normal hospital to a remote location where jiraiya would then proceed to work on his seal it turns out nothing had actually happened to the seal but it was loosening up the more and more time went by so jiraiya needed to work quickly He's able to patch up the seal, but the lingering chakra that was left in Naruto's chakra system had been there long enough to sort of combine with it. So the red hues and blue hues combining here would create purple. And unlike in the original, at the start of this time skip, there would be about three to four tails capable of flowing through the seal since it's near broken nature. And at this point, we would go into our rendition of a time skip of sorts. And what I do mean by of sorts is a prolonged period of time that we shall periodically go over to establish some form of progression within our timeline. And within this given situation, it would actually start off with Naruto getting the hold of how his chakra network currently works with it having gained great changes not only in capacity but in potency. This means chakra within its purest form, for example things like the Rasengan, become a lot more close natured to attacks like the Biju Dama or the Tailed Beast Bomb. So this makes it in turn a lot more dangerous for external use. Obviously, Jiraiya would attempt to have Naruto control this to a stabilized fashion, but it can only go so much before it will become inevitable. This is where I will be initiating some big changes. First of all, Naruto is currently always leaking chakra, which would create a permanent field around himself where he could create remote explosions similar to the biju dama but to a contained extent since it is not as potent or even as largely charged and on the other hand he can also increase the potency of the chakra itself making the air denser and more heavy similar to the concept of gravity this is where our form of dark matter release would take its place and along with this comes some new abilities one slash two of these abilities being the ability to leave behind portions of chakra similar to a flare or signal of sorts that could be remotely executed to either heighten or lower the amount of gravity in any specific area as long as it is within the concentrated range of the chakra which in turn also means 
this effect can only last as long as there is still chakra remaining. So opponents like Pain and other people who have the ability to absorb chakra might still be immune to similar abilities. Teleportation abilities will also be able to bypass this. But on the other hand, he also now gains the immediate ability for those weaker than him or with a lesser strength than him within his presence will now buckle under pure pressure, somewhat being pushed down by gravity itself, except in turn it is actually his chakra pushing down on them, making it harder to breathe, and so on and so forth. But unlike you might think, this only being a benefit for Naruto, it actually helps Jiraiya in sorts, being able to adapt to harsher environments more easily since he had spent a prolonged period with Naruto, being approximately 2-3 to three years long. In this time, he also learns the new form of the Rasengan, which is kind of almost like the Bijudama, but to a much more contained and I guess preliminary version than the Rasen Shuriken version that we had in the war arc was. And on top of that, I feel Jiraiya would not tamper with Ninetales energy as much, except maybe going into meditation for Naruto to be able to bring himself back from that state. So this leaves us with a lot of space for Jiraiya to work on Naruto's individual techniques. In this specific case, he actually wants to extend Naruto's knowledge of his new abilities instead of teaching him even more stuff, since figuring out too many things at the same time might be a negative to his overall skill in the future. But along with these abilities, I do see Jiraiya teaching him some utility things, like maybe progressing his knowledge of the summoning jutsu or other things he already knows of, experimenting with the Rasengan after seeing how chakra in its purest form can change how it works, and on top of that, I do see one final change, and that being he teaches Naruto proper chakra enhancement, which would be things like sharpening a kunai with pure chakra and so on and so forth. Maybe other techniques like the body flicker and miscellaneous things he would have learned throughout his span of Shippuden, meaning Naruto to start off with is in a much better position. And this here leaves us with the start of Naruto Shippuden. We are now once again in a state of compromise as Naruto probably would not have the same personality he did starting off Shippuden. Not only did he have a large wave of negative chakra flood into his system, but bond with his system as a whole. So the chances that he does have a more grim approach to his personality is greater than zero. So instead of making him basically human Kurama, what I will instead do is make him more of a realistic character. If you do not know what I mean by realistic, think about our human definition of a realist, someone who thinks they have a grasp on what is accomplishable and what is not or to be intact with the reality meaning he will have the grim approach of everybody dies eventually not everybody makes an impact so just because you're a good person doesn't mean you will be remembered that's why in this case he will in fact want to become hokage just like he wanted to win the original and since we started off later all that really changes is his reasoning to be, want to be Hokage, and in this stead, he wants to be Hokage so that he is thus not forgotten. But, as I said, we're now at the start of Shippuden, meaning Naruto is currently standing on a tower looking over the leaf. As he can't help but to remark, it's good to be back home. As he would jump down to see Sakura, Konohamaru, Moegi and Udon. Obviously, Konohamaru would jump up to Naruto saying, Big bro Naruto, you're back! And obviously, some smug remarks from Sakura. And this time, I don't actually think the same altercation would have happened with Sakura and Naruto, since Naruto was in a near-death state for a pretty long while, so I don't think she would have said everything she did in canon about how Naruto should have left and Sasuke should have stayed. So I do think they have a much better relationship starting out with. So when they're both called to the Hokage office or when they both arrive to the Hokage office, Naruto having planned to go there and Sakura having been called there. 
This would lead to, obviously, a talk between Jiraiya Tsunade and Naruto, figuring out how stable his powers are, and if the bell test would be okay. This would get something in Sakura going being like, the bell test? What about the bell test? I thought we already passed that. With yet another Shinobi walking in, being Kakaji saying, you didn't exactly pass. I let you slip. I don't remember you getting the bells. Obviously, this would imply that this time, yes, teamwork would still be important, but getting the actual bells is a part of the test this time. And both Naruto and Sakura would agree, basically setting us up for that beautiful start of Naruto mini arc where we see Naruto and Sakura versus Kakashi. So, I do think there would be not the same but a larger group of people present since Naruto didn't uh, interact with a lot of people upon leaving since he was in a really bad condition and as soon as Jiraiya arrived he was fixed and then dragged away meaning a lot of people haven't seen him in years so a lot of people would thus gather at this position to watch the spar off from these groups I could say people like team guy Team Asuma, Kurenai, and so on and so forth would all be there, and Naruto's entire generation, I guess you could say, as they watch off for Naruto and Sakura versus Kakashi. So, let's begin. We start off this little bout with Kakashi explaining that he will in fact be using his Sharingan, since he thinks if he doesn't, he will be taken care of pretty easily. So he would raise his headband and lower his mast to reveal his Sharingan. This is when an intense pressure fills everybody standing in the exact proximation, except for Sakura. Why this is? Naruto is placing points of gravity, one on himself and one on Sakura. And thus, they will be the only two people or the only two points not affected by the immense gravitational downforce that is being created by his chakra. So, even though Kakashi does attempt to use the body flicker to get away, he is spotted nevertheless. This leaves opportunity for them to more easily track them. Meaning, as Naruto and Sakura would leap at Kakashi, Sakura would question this. She sees the shinobi in the trees, looking like they're having trouble standing and breathing, and so on and so forth, with Naruto quaintly explaining what's going on. He explains that his powers or his abilities had grown much since they last saw each other. More specifically, he had been poisoned and this is the result of it. Obviously, she would say, are you okay? Do you need someone to heal you? And he would explain that it's not the traditional type of poison, but one that includes chakra. His chakra is corrupted and that's what causes these abilities. He's able to corrupt others with this chakra, not to the point where they would get sick or anything, but they'd have trouble moving and so on and so forth. In actuality, everything his chakra touches changes. He had actually placed two points, one on himself and one on her, to prevent them from feeling the effects of his chakra. Whilst his chakra, in actuality, is making the air around them denser and the gravitational force heavier meaning everyone that is affected by it gets pulled down. And as this explanation comes to a close, Kakashi would leap out of a tree trying to strike on surprise. Since his speed had been heavily nerfed, Ichidori was his only option. But this would be swiftly countered by Naruto pulling out some sort of purple Rasengan. As these two would clash, it would create a little explosion between them as both of them jump back. This is a face-off, but Naruto isn't going to waste his time. He points out his finger and points it down as the gravitational force around Kakashi becomes visible. He falls to the ground and disperses into smoke, obviously having been a clone. Naruto would explain that this technique takes a lot of concentration and a lot of chakra, but basically what he did is he made the area where Kakashi was standing so heavy that it was physically hurting him, thus it dispelled a clone. Naruto had predicted this be a clone since if Kakashi, the real Kakashi, was there throwing a Chidori, he would not have jumped back after the clash. Since this, Naruto knows, would have injured both of them, he knows that that was in fact a clone trying to not dispel. But as the clone dispelled, an attack would come from behind as Naruto would grab Kakashi by the leg. He said, 
being slowed down doesn't suit you, Kakashi-sensei, as he tries and throws a punch. Sakura was in a moment of shock and couldn't move, but Naruto gives her one look and says, Stop standing there and do something, as they would now begin fighting Kakashi. From here on going forward, we would say that there was an actual fight with Sakura, putting Kakashi in many dangerous opportunities and maybe even potentially hitting him once. A clone, at least. He would get back the memory of a very painful experience and knows not to get hit by Sakura. And he knows that Naruto is dangerous as well, since as soon as you get within a certain parameter of Naruto, everything becomes heavier, including your breathing. So he would know to stay clear. But inevitably, he would be found, and unlike Naruto, pulling out the entire makeout franchise situation where he could spoil it for Kakashi, I think there would actually be a battle here with Naruto and Sakura barely being able to slip up a win. Not that Naruto isn't capable, but I don't think he wants to put up his entire arsenal right here since summoning Gamma Bunta on poor old Kakashi wouldn't be that fair of a fight. So that's how we'll end it. Them actually getting the bells. But Obviously, the sunrise would come up as they do, and with the sunrise comes a very certain hawk delivering a very certain message. And with that out of the way, guys, if you did enjoy this video or like any of the art you actually saw in it, I actually did this art myself, and I do art over on Fiverr, so if you want to commission me to do any Naruto fan art or any type of OC for anime, go check out my links down in the description. Uh, I'd be more than happy to work with you guys and yeah uh, To anyone wondering the Naruto Keke Genkai series will be continuing Saturday and on top of that if anyone wants to see an edited version of those edited version of all these videos become available for channel members near immediately So if you want to go see a part one edited version of Keke Genkai Naruto that is up for channel members right now but yeah, I've been going on way too long. I hope you guys have a good morning, good evening, good night. It's been your boy Six. Peace.